Ready? And today I'm looking at the sky through my telescope. When we look through a telescope, we can see things that are really far away, close up, like those clouds and the tops of really tall trees. When we look through a telescope at night, we see different things, like the moon and the stars. And can you see that really bright dot in the middle? That's a planet. The moon, stars and planets are in space, and space is all around planet Earth where we live. But there are some things in space that are so far away we can't see them even if we use a telescope. So we have to use something else. This is a different type of telescope. It's called a radio telescope, and it's huge. But do you know how a radio telescope works? Let's find out. How does it work? Radio telescope. To find out how a radio telescope works, I come to an observatory. Wow! This radio telescope is so big. It's 38 metres wide. That's the same as 15 cars parked next to each other. A radio telescope collects radio waves to find out where things in space are. Radio waves carry energy through space, but they're invisible. We can't see them with our own eyes. They travel from space to Earth, but because they travel such a long way, they're not very strong or easy to find. So that's why we need something this big to find them. This part of the radio telescope is called the dish. And can you see the white box in the middle? That's called the receiver. But to find out how the dish and the receiver work together to collect radio waves, I think we need to take a closer look. Stars, planets and galaxies give off radio waves that travel through space towards Earth. Some radio waves hit the radio telescope. They bounce off the dish and into the receiver. The receiver turns radio waves into signals and sends the signals along cables to a computer. The computer turns the signals into colours. So we can see the radio waves as a picture. Scientists use the pictures to help us learn how far away planets, stars and other galaxies are. That was amazing. But to collect radio waves from galaxies, stars and planets, the radio telescope has to be able to point at different parts of space. The radio telescope can move up and down, round and round, but because it's huge, it moves really slowly. So I'm going to film it moving with some of my special cameras. And this special camera is going to record a time lapse, which lets us see slow things happen much quicker. All set. Look, can you see the radio telescope moving? from space. Radio telescopes can be found all around the world. These ones are in America, in the mountains. And these radio telescopes are in the desert and they work together to collect lots of radio waves at the same time. But how do all these radio telescopes know where to point? This is Ollie, and Ollie is a controller. It's his job to watch the telescopes and make sure they're all pointing the right way so they can collect radio waves from space. The radio telescope collects the radio waves and the receiver turns them into signals. Those signals get sent through cables to these computers. Can you hear that whirring sound? is the noise of these computers working away. They collect signals from lots of different radio telescopes and send 
them to a supercomputer that's so special, it stays locked behind this door. And this takes all of that information and turns the signals into a picture using different colours. Now, let me show you something really special. This is a photograph of a galaxy. The galaxy is made up of lots of stars, planets and dust. Planet Earth, where we live, is in a galaxy called the Milky Way. This is a photograph of the Milky Way. It's beautiful, isn't it? But the pictures a radio telescope and a supercomputer make don't look like normal photos. The pictures they make show planets and galaxies as colours. Can you see the bit in the middle is red? That's because there's lots of radio waves, which means that's where the stars and planets are. How brilliant is that? I loved finding out how a radio telescope works. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember what the part of the radio telescope is called that collects the radio waves? That's right, it's the dish. Did you hear the sound of the computers that collect the signals from the radio telescope? And did you see the radio telescope spin around to find the radio waves on my special time-lapse camera? So the next time you look up at the sky, you'll know how a radio telescope works to find stars and planets that we can't see. Can you think of any games we might play where we need to find something? How about hide and seek? Here I am. Hello. Or how about a maze? A maze is a puzzle with lots of different paths and we have to try and find the middle or the way out. Let's find out. How is it made? Maze. All mazes have a middle, lots of paths, an exit, a way to get out, and an entrance, a way to get in. The rules of a maze are simple. Find the middle by choosing the right paths. Shall we give it a go? And I'm wearing one of my special cameras so you can see what I see. through the entrance. Look, there are lots of paths leading in lots of different directions. Oh, wow! Look, you see, there are some places where paths meet. When two paths meet, we say it's a junction. I think we should go... Left. Go on, this way. Oh, no! It's a block. That was so much fun. There are big mazes like this one, but you might have played with a small maze instead, just like this one. This small maze works in the same way as the big maze. Can you see all the paths and junctions? But instead of me trying to find my way around it, it's got a small metal ball inside called a ball bearing. Do you know how a wooden maze like this one is made? Let's find out. But first I need to try and find the exit. To find out how a wooden maze is made, I've come here to a craft workshop. <laughs> Making a maze starts with one of these. It's called a maze blank. Can you see that it's made up of lots of circles inside each other? One, two. We call these concentric circles. The green line on the outside will become the outside of our maze. This is where the entrance and the exit will be. And the black lines, they show us where the paths of the maze will be. But how does a maze blank turn into a maze? First, the maze blank goes on top of a light box like this, and then a piece of plain paper goes on top of that. <laughs> design is drawn on plain paper laid over the top of the light box. This means the design can be drawn using the circles as a guide. Whoa, there we go. 
This is called our path map. The path map shows us the correct path through our maze. Next, we need to copy the path map onto the maze blank. To do this, we use little pieces of black tape to make the junctions. Can you see they're being placed over the lines drawn onto the maze blank? And then white tape is used to block the path and make dead ends. Wow! So this is our finished maze design. It's got lots of different paths, junctions and blocked off paths. But to make a wooden maze, the path map needs to go onto a computer. And here it is. This is Russell, and Russell sends the image of the maze path to this machine. It's called a CNC machine, and its job is to carve the maze path into the piece of wood. Do you see it in action? mill tool moves really quickly so to see how it carves the maze path into the piece of wood I'm going to film it using one of my special cameras. Right, ready when you are Russell. My special camera lets us see things that happen quickly much slower. Can you see all the little wood shavings flying off? Look at this. All the different paths have been carved into the piece of wood to make our maze. All we need to do is pop in the ball bearing and we have a maze ready to play with. I loved finding out how a wooden maze is made. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of the place where the paths join together? That's right, it's called a junction. machine made as it cuts out the maze path on the wood. And did you see on my special camera how I tried lots of different paths inside the maze before I found the middle? So the next time you play with a maze, big or small, you'll know how it's made. And the next time you look up at the night sky, you'll know how a radio telescope works to help us learn more about other planets, stars, and galaxies. Right, I'm gonna have another go with this little maze. <laughs> I'll see you next time.